Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Speed Test Tracker, the new version on a Portainer. So, a little bit about this series I'm going over Home Labs, or installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse. So go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what we'll be installing today. Speed Test Tracker 2. It's a self-hosted internet performance tracking application that runs speed test uh, checks against Euclid's speed test service. And um, here's some screenshots of what it looks like. It's got a pretty nice UI. It's built on L Larvel. So we're going to start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. And I'm going to scroll down to how to install Speed Test Tracker 2 on Portainer. And then I'm going to go into Docker Compose. So version 3.3, Docker Compose is being used. I'm going to set some services. And then the service underneath the service is called Speed Test Tracker. And then the container name set to Speed Test Tracker. The ports are 8080 on the host side and 80 on the container. If this does collide with another port, then you can change the port on the host side. So a 443 on the container right here. So the left is the host and the right is the container. So I'm set some environment variables. So um, a PUID 1000, a P PGID 1000, and um, a, D a DB co connection is MySQL. DB host is, is a DB. Uh, that rhymes with this service right here. And um, 3306, the default port for MySQL. And speed test tracker. That's the database name. The the DB a username is called Speedy, and that rhymes with this Marie DB down here. And D, a DB password is password, and that rhymes with Marie DB down here. So, and a time zone is your time zone. So set it right here. And then now I'm gonna set some volumes. So it's going to uh, do a, a, a bind mount for the ETC local time on the host side. And in the container is ETC local time, and it's set to read only. Um, data, app data, speed test tracker 2, and then config. So this is on the host side, and you can change it. And in the container side, it's config. Do not change the con container side. And now on the ho host side right here is data, app data, speed test tracker 2, web. This is on the host side, and this is in the container side, ETC SSL web right here. And then the image is coming off GitHub, and you know that because this URL right here. And then the do Docker image, and then the tag is latest. Restart unless stopped. So if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. And it depends on the DB down here. And the image is MariaDB and then a uh, uh, 10 for the, for, for the tag. And then restart always it means it'll restart no matter what if you stop it any any reason. And then I'm gonna set some environment variables, so MariaDB da database, and these should align right here because this container right here is uh, connecting to this container to store the data in. And I'm going to set some volume down here, and then data app data speed test tracker DB. And then this is on the host side. And like I said, you can change these paths if you like. And in the container side is bar lib MySQL. You cannot change the right side. So that's a little bit about the Docker Compose. So I'm gonna go up here to copy raw file. And then I'm gonna go over to my Portainer and get this installed. So I'm gonna start out on the Portainer's dashboard. And I'm gonna go to local, stacks, and then add stack up here. Now I'm gonna put in a stack name. So I'm gonna do speed test tracker to stack. You can put anything you like up here. And then the stacks, I use Docker Compose underneath. 
And also I'm gonna scroll down to web editor right here. I'm gonna paste in the Docker and pose that we um, co copied over in Big Bear Video Assets. And then I'm gonna say deploy the stack down here. Now it's deployed and we can go in there and you can see all the containers running. So now I'm gonna go over the stack options. So once you're in the stack, you can go up here to editor and you can edit your Docker compose. And then you can say update the stack down here. What the repo image and re redeploy means is it'll re pull, pull a fresh image off the registry and uh, update your local cache. So if the, uh, if the user installed like a latest tag, um, then what it would do is it would pull that latest tag down like this one. It, it would pull it down from the registry and update it and then re redeploy the containers and then you'll see, see the new updates. So um, now we'll go back over to stacks and you can see the containers down here. And um, you can also stop this stack, delete the stack, and create template from the stack. So that's a little about a bit about the stack options. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now you can go into each container right here and you can have logs and specs, stats, console, and attach. You can also start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate, and edit. And um, you can come down here and create an image, access control, and then container details, uh, the, the image, and then read to be uh, the environment variables, the, la la the labels on the container, the restart policies, so you can change it, and then the uh, the volume on the host side, the volume on the container side, and then the uh, container network, the Docker network, I mean, that it created, the bridge. And um, you can go over here to containers again. You can go to speed test tracker and have the same options. And then you can go in here and you can look at the config, uh, the log, I mean, uh, great for debugging. And inspect stats console attach. And access control, create image. And then the, the image that's pulling. The port configuration. So on the host side is 8443. In the container side is 443. And then on the host is 8080. And then 80 in the container. A command entry point and then the environment variables of the labels and then restart policies and then the actual volumes on the host the volumes in the container and then the a bridge network that it created so that's a little bit about the container options so now you're gonna to go to your portainer's IP address, and then you're gonna add 8443 in the end. And then you're also going to add HTTPS because it's got a self-signed certificate. So I'm going to um, return or enter go and go to it. You're gonna, it's gonna say your connection is not private. I'm gonna just proceed. Now you can see it, so I'm gonna go into it, and you can now um, si sign in, which is admin at example.com and then the password is password and then I'm going to just say sign in now we're signed in so you can queue a speed test up here and you can go into results once you see results here you can uh, see all of them then you can go into users and you can see the current users you can view edit you can also add a new user you can go over here to general you can change the speed test tracker, the site name. You can change the display time zone, the uh, the, uh, the time format, the, the the speed test schedule. You can go in a Chrome generator right here and change the Chrome job. And then you can change the speed test servers. You can also go over here to InfluxDB and you can turn that on and enter the information here. You can go to no notifications and you can um, t turn on 
enable da a da a database notifications, enable mail notifications, enable telegram notifications, then you, and then you press uh, save changes. You can go over thresholds and you can enab enable absolute thresholds right here. And then press the save changes. You can also delete all the data. And um, you can see it, it happened. So it did a speed test and the upload and the ping. And also have the graphs down here to where you can see them and the ping and the jitter. So you can also see the notifications when they come in. You can change uh, to uh, light mode and then to dark mode. And then um, there's a little bug to where you have to refresh the page to get back into light mode. And then you can enable system theme too to where it's auto. Then you can sign out. So that's a little bit about the UI. So I just showed you step by step on getting Speed Test Tracker 2 running on Portainer. This makes it to where it's easy to keep up with your speed of your ISP. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or you need community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our discourse. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.